Hey guys, in this video, I'm checking out the Zonelai 14 mm F2 manual focus prime lens for Sony E-mount. Super excited about this one. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you're looking for a simple and easy way to set up an online website, look no further than Squarespace. So a couple of months ago, I reviewed the Zonelai 22 mm f1.8 and I really, really liked that lens. In fact, it made it into my top five manual focus prime lenses for the Sony video that I made about it. I'm excited to check this thing out. Let's see how it comes packaged. So here is the box this Zonelai lens comes in. Nice packaging has a little magnet tab and you open it up like that. Uh, there is a user manual, looks like it's only in Chinese and the lens itself is nicely padded. Not a whole lot of accessories at all. There's nothing else in the box. Here is the lens up close. It has a nice branded lens cap on the front. It is metal. So it just kind of slides on and slides off just like that. You can see immediately that the front lens element is convex. It's a nice and big piece of glass. There's kind of a built-in rose petal lens hood. Uh, doesn't seem to be removable. So around the back, just a plastic lens cap. Looks like an APS-C cutout here. No electronic connections because this is a manual only focus lens. Not a whole lot of branding either. You can see there's nothing on the sides that indicates this is a zone lie lens. On the front there is, so zone lie, serial number, and then 14 millimeter f2.0 and then 72 millimeter filter thread. Towards the bottom, you have the aperture control. No distinct clicks, it goes from F2 to F16, again, declicked. And then the focus ring, which is right here. Not a whole lot of range. Uh, I would say about a quarter turn, and that's it. There are some markings in this kind of funky old style font in feet and meters, so infinity, and then 0.2 of a meter and 0.6 of a foot. So that is it. There are a couple of adjustment screws here. Not a whole lot to this lens. Uh, what's more important really is to see how it performs. So let's put this on the camera and see what we get. Here is what the lens looks like mounted on my A6400. You can see it's pretty compact. It is a little bit front heavy. It's pretty heavy because it's made all out of metal and glass. The construction, I would say, is good. It's not one of the best built lenses I've ever seen, but it's not certainly not one of the worst. You can see around the front, again, that front piece of glass is huge and it does bulge out. Now they include a screw on adapter. If you want to use a 72 millimeter filter thread, you can screw that on and then use a filter on the front of this lens if you want to. The focus ring is easy to access, has nice grip, it's easy to turn, it has almost that perfect weight. It's not too light, it's not too heavy. The aperture control at the bottom is nice and smooth. I wish it was a little bit tougher to turn because you can accidentally bump this and I found that there were many instances where I was taking a photo and then I looked down and I was somewhere in between f2 and f2.8 because I had slightly bumped it. Overall, I'd say it is a good looking package. It's about a centimeter longer than a Sony 35 for those of you who have one of those for reference. So far, this lens looks great. Before I show you some sample photos, let's talk about today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can build a simple, clean, elegant online presence. Now, I am by no means a web designer, but I took 45 minutes, in fact, I timed myself this morning, and I created a website for my wife and I's real estate business here in the Austin area. There are so many tools packed into Squarespace. You can use it to customize, you can create an e-commerce website, you can create a portfolio if you have a photography business, and all of this is done seamlessly. And head over to squarespace.com for your free trial, and once you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash Arthur R to receive 10% off your website or domain. So now let's check out some sample photos and videos using this Zone Lie lens on my A6400. Here we go.
So that is it for the sample photos and videos with this lens. And I have to say, initially I was very underwhelmed or underimpressed because I was expecting this lens to have some of the characteristics of the 22 millimeter f1.8 that I liked so much. Primarily, I was looking at the colors of that old lens, the 22 millimeter. They were very warm, very vintagey, and I was expecting that with this 14 millimeter lens. But in this case, they're a little bit cold, a little bit stale. And when you compare them side by side to something like the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, you'll notice the Sigma is a whole lot warmer. So let's talk about optical image quality, in particular sharpness. Wide open, this lens at f2 isn't great, unfortunately. In the center, it's decent, but in the corners, it's almost unusable. So I found that the majority of the shots where I had a subject very close to this lens, I was able to nail down focus in the center and get a nice and sharp subject, separated with some bokeh, and then I didn't really care about the corners because those didn't need to be sharp. When I did find myself in a setting where I was using this lens for landscape photography and I needed the entire frame to be sharp, I found that stopping it down to 5.6 is where you'd start to see the corners get a little bit sharper. I took a couple of side-by-side -side shots with my Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, which is not a fair comparison because we all know it as one of the sharpest, one of the best lenses that you can buy for your Sony APS-C mount camera. It's also one of my favorite lenses because it is so sharp. So here are some side-by-side -side photos, uh, some nature shots, and you can see that in the corners, the Sigma still stays nice and sharp, whereas this zone lie lens seems to fall apart. But even in the center of a lot of these images, these zone lie seems to disappoint. The first shot was done at f2, which is not this lens's strong suit, but even stopped down to f8 in this example. While the zone lie is sharper, it's nowhere near the sharpness of the Sigma lens. In this last example, you'll see an image of my wife and our baby boy, and this is where this lens truly shines, is where it has a subject close to the front of the lens in the center of the shot. You stop it down maybe a little bit, and it's nice and sharp, but the background has a ton of bokeh. Speaking of bokeh, at f2, you do get a decent amount of it with this lens. Unfortunately, there are a lot of outlines, so it's not exactly creamy if you want to describe it that way. I would describe the bokeh on this lens as pretty busy. In fact, probably one of the busiest backgrounds that you'll ever see using a lens like this. Uh, which some people may like, but I personally prefer just a nice and creamy, smooth, non-distracting background when it comes to bokeh. Now, as far as using this lens, it was pretty straightforward. I mentioned before that the aperture control seems to bump every once in a while, so I did find myself having to fix that and put it where it needed to be. As far as the focus ring, it was nice to use. However, I felt that the range wasn't quite there when I needed to nail down focus. Now with most wide angle lenses, you don't necessarily need a large range to get stuff in focus, but because the minimum focusing distance on this lens is so close to the front of it, it could benefit from a little bit more of a range. So what are my overall thoughts of this lens? Well, I want to like it more than I do. Unfortunately, right now, there are a whole lot of competitors out there that are well within the price of this lens that in my opinion are a little bit better. For example, the Rokinon 12 millimeter F2, it's right around the same price as this. It's a ton sharper, suffers uh, less from that busy bokeh, and also has a little bit less chromatic aberration, which I forgot to mention, this lens has a whole lot of chromatic aberration even in the center of some images, which was strange to see. Also, if you're looking for an even wider lens, like an ultra wide lens, the Laowa 9mm is the one you should definitely look at. It's a little bit more expensive than this. But at the end of the day, I can't help but think that for most people, they are better off saving up a couple extra hundred dollars and buying the awesome Sigma 16mm f1.4. You guys already know this. Uh, because as you could tell from those side-by-side -side images, there's really no comparison between this lens and that lens. And when you're spending $200 on this lens or maybe $350 for the Sigma, it's kind of a no-brainer. Now, I will say that the Zonelai 22mm f1.8 that I mentioned at the beginning of this video is still one of my favorite cheap manual focus prime lenses for Sony APS-C. And I would still recommend that you go out and buy that zone lie if you are looking for a cheap, fun, vintage looking lens to add to your collection. But unfortunately for this one, it just falls a little bit short 
and maybe that's because I had somewhat higher expectations. That is my review of this lens. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought. If you have any questions about this lens, be sure to list those down below as well. And maybe you like the images coming out of this and you like the price point and you like the busier background bouquet. If you do, then I will post a link down below to Amazon where you can go check out specs and purchase one of these lenses. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all of your likes, comments, and support. Stay tuned for more and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Who knew that making a YouTube video was so much work? See this making YouTube videos thing? There's it's hard manual labor. Where? They, look at that, it's a hunter deer. Oh my goodness. Where'd it go? Jason, did you know that deers come out to hunt at night? Are they nocturnal? Yeah, deers are very nocturnal.